In this video, we're going to explore Euler angles. First, we're going to review reference frames. We're also going to review rotation of axes. Then we'll talk about going from the northeast down reference frame to the body reference frame and back from the body reference frame to the northeast down reference frame. If you Google Ned and body, I'm sorry, this is what you come up with. So we talked about the Earth-centered inertial reference frame, which had an x-axis which went through the prime meridian at the intersection of the equator and pointed to a celestial object at a particular instant of time. Uh, the J2000, uh, it, it pointed to the vernal equinox on the date January 1, 2000. The z-axis is the axis of rotation of the Earth, and the y-axis is chosen to make it a right coordinate system, which also points out through the uh, equator, the equatorial plane. The Earth-centered Earth-fixed reference frame uh, rotates relative to the inertial frame at a rate omega sub e. Uh, it also has an x-axis, which goes through the prime meridian at the intersection with the equator. Uh, the z-axis is the rotation of axis of the Earth, and the y-axis is the uh, chosen to be a right coordinate system. The northeast down reference frame is a tangent frame to the surface of the Earth, where the x-axis is north, the y-axis is east, and the z-axis is down. The body reference frame for a flying object, the x-axis points along the direction of forward motion. The z-axis points what would be down for the object sitting on the surface of the Earth. And the y-axis is a, uh, chosen to be a right coordinate system, so it goes out the right of the aircraft. We didn't show the sensor frame here. Uh, that's usually just displaced from the body frame. Hopefully it aligns with it. And then we also have the lat-long height or lat-long altitude uh, uh, coordinate system. And we explored going back and forth between the Earth-centered, Earth-fixed, and the lat-long uh, height. Uh, that's not the topic of today. Today we mainly want to talk about going from the northeast down to the body frame. Before doing that, let's look at the, uh, how you go for the change of coordinates uh, through rotation. So we have a xy reference frame, and then we have an x prime y prime reference frame that's been rotated relative to the xy frame by the angle psi. So we find the coordinates of the point here, which is xy in the xy uh, reference frame. We find the new coordinates, little x and little y uh, prime, uh, in the new reference frame using trig. And we found that the x prime was x times the cos of psi plus y times the sine of psi, and y prime was minus x times the sine of psi plus y times the cos of psi. We saw we could write this in a compact matrix notation, where we called that uh, matrix there C. Uh, it's called a cosine matrix, or a directional matrix, or a rotational matrix. Uh, so the coordinates uh, in the original reference frame uh, get uh, which are x and y get operated on by the matrix C to form the new coordinates P prime. Uh, this matrix is what's called orthogonal. Uh, it's orthonormal. It's unit sized, uh, meaning it doesn't scale the vector. It just rotates the the vectors in the two uh, reference frames are just rotations relative to each other. And, and a nice thing about that is uh, that means that the inverse of the C matrix is its transpose. Uh, so you don't have to do a lot of uh, uh, finding determinants and things like that to find the inverse. You just uh, reverse the terms around the diagonal. And so now we can find uh, uh, the, the point in the original reference frame uh, in terms of its new coordinates, x prime and y prime, using this uh, C transpose matrix. So here's a problem. Uh, aircraft is flying 600 knots along its forward direction, and it's uh, oriented 30 degrees uh, uh, off from north. Uh, it's pitched at uh, up at 60 degrees and it's banking at 45 degrees. Banking so the right wing is lower than the uh, left wing, uh, assuming it's a, a winged aircraft. So what are the components of the velocity in the northeast down frame? So our approach is going to be to figure out the transformation of the coordinate system and then just multiply uh, the vector, uh, uh, which is the uh, velocity vector of the aircraft, which would be uh, 600 forward, zero right, zero down, right? Uh, so uh, once we get this transformation, uh, then we can uh, do that. But we're going to go from the body, from the ref, the Ned frame to the body frame through a series of rotations. And there's a standard way of doing this. And this is the uh, uh, Euler angle concept that we will rotate first in the horizontal plane about either the yaw or heading uh, angle. And then we will wrote, 
rotate about the uh, 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 the y axes, the new rotated uh, the, the y axis we get by rotating about the uh, at the new y axis will rotate about it uh, uh, by the uh, uh, the pitch angle or the uh, uh, the other name for that, uh, and then we'll after we get our new reference frame there, then we'll rotate uh, roll the plane down uh, or bank it by forty five degrees. So that's the concept here. These are called the Euler angles. So the psi and the theta and the phi are called the Euler angles. So we start with them aligned, rotate about z by psi, that gives us new axes, rotate about the new y by theta, that gives us another set of new axes, and then rotate about the new uh, uh, x by phi. Phi, theta, and psi are called the Euler angles. And this is not a, a order independent uh, process. You can't pitch, then roll, then uh, uh, yaw. You have to uh, choose which way you're going to do it and be consistent about it. And uh, Euler, since Euler's time in the uh, late uh, 18th century, people have been doing this the same way, which is to do the yaw and then the pitch and then the roll. So first let's rotate this uh, about the z-axis. Now our z-axis in both the uh, uh, northeast down and the body uh, rot uh, looks down. So here we've drawn the coordinates as it would look up from above. So Z is going into the screen. X is forward or north and Y is uh, 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 out the right or east. And so we, we rotate this by the angle Psi here. That's just the same as the rotation we had before. It's just drawn differently, but it's really the same uh, rotations we had. We're just looking at it from the other side of the, of the circle, so to speak. Um, so uh, the only wrinkle here is we added uh, the Z uh, direction here, and the new Z is the same as the old Z. So we just increase the size of our matrix by one, put in some zeros where you would multiply uh, uh, by Z, uh, and then uh, on the third row, put in some zeros where you'd multiply by X and Y, and put a one there so you get Z prime equals Z. So this is really the same transformation we had previously. This matrix in Euler angle terms is called D, uh, um, and so our, the coordinates in this new uh, rotated about the uh, z-axis uh, is called p prime here. And we can say p prime is d times p using matrix notation. And again, this corresponds to rotating by the heading. So next we're going to rotate about our new uh, y-axis. Y-axis is out the right. Uh, so we're going to pitch up by an angle theta. Uh, again, about this new y-axis, not the old y-axis. And so here again, we're looking at it now, our Y is coming out the screen. So we're sort of looking as if we're looking at our aircraft from the right. Uh, and we're gonna pitch up from our old axes to our new axes, uh, X prime prime and Z prime prime. So again, it's the same transformation. Uh, the, the, the trig is the same. The, uh, uh, the SIGN of sine ends up uh, uh, in that first row instead of in the last row. Uh, but otherwise, it's the same operations. So we can get our new X, our new Y, and our new Z, uh, just as we did before. And this is called the C matrix. So uh, now we have yet another. We've taken our, our first transformation. Now we're going to rotate this uh, through the up, pitch it up by uh, angle theta. And so the new point, the coordinates in this new system would be uh, P prime prime. And again, we've done our pitch operation now. Lastly, we'll rotate about the new uh, 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 x-axis. Uh, uh, and so x was pointing forward. So rotating about it, positive direction would be for the right wing to go lower than the left wing. Uh, and so uh, this is shown on the, the diagram here. Uh, here's our uh, new uh, y-axis, our new z-axis, rotated down relative to the old ones. And so, again, it's the same transformation we've doing, been doing previously. It's just now we're operating on Y and Z. X trans comes through all by itself as uh, X prime 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 equals X prime prime. This is called the B matrix. And so we get uh, our new point in our new coordinate system, which is really the body system now. And this was achieved by rolling uh, uh, through the bank angle. So now we're going to put this all together and... Uh, I'm not going to read all these terms, and you're hopefully grateful for that. But this matrix multiplication of B times C times D corresponds to 
doing the D operation on our vector first and then doing the C operation on the result of that. Okay, so the D operation was to go to the heading or yaw, uh, how much yaw of the, of the aircraft. And then the C operation was the pitch up operation. And then the B operation was the roll down operation. And when you multiply these all out, you get the terms on the third row. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a gory term, but this is, <laughs> this is just a bunch of multiplies and adds. And uh, it's just specifying how it's to be done on, on uh, the operation. This is still one of these matrices, one of these uh, 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 diagonal, uh, 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 directional matrices, cosine matrices, so to speak, rotational matrices. And so its inverse is still its transpose. And so we don't have to go through again the, uh, the matrix operations of finding the inverse. We can just flip everything about the diagonal to get the terms to uh, uh, construct. So this will be the matrix that takes us from the body frame to the northeast down frame. So here we are back with our problem. We had a heading of 30 degrees, a pitch of 60 degrees, and a bank of 45 degrees. And when you put those terms into this uh, uh, lovely matrix, uh, uh, the, the, the expression for the inverse A matrix, uh, this is what you come up with. You can do it both by hand, uh, and we'll see, uh, you'll see on the uh, operations, uh, uh, either in class or uh, uh, on your uh, exercises, that this can be done with MATLAB. So when we multiply this by uh, 600, the direction forward direction, 0, 0, we're not drifting to the, uh, to the right and we're not drifting up or down, we get the actual coordinates uh, in the, we get the velocity components in the northeast down frame. So we've got an x component, a north component of minus 260 knots. That means we're moving south at 260 knots. We've got a, a east component of 150 knots. So remember, we're flying 600 knots, period. And then we've got a Z component of minus 520 knots. That means we're going up at a rate of 520 knots. And uh, hopefully if we uh, square those and add them up and take the square root of it, we ought to get back to 600. I did not check that and we might do that uh, in real time in class. To go from the Northeast down frame to the body frame, we rotate the heading or yaw about z, then we rotate the elevation or pitch about the new y, and then we rotate the bank or the roll about the new x. And that's the rotation matrix on slide 10. That's the matrix A. To go the other way, we do the operations in the opposite order. So to go from the body frame to the net frame, we would actually rotate uh, uh, the pitch back, uh, excuse me, the, the bank back, and then the pitch down, and then the yaw or the heading back to the orientation of the north. And that's done by the rotation matrix inverse operation that's also on slide 10. So next we're gonna have inertial guidance concepts.